Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about The Wheel of Time, Episode 7. This one they're calling The Dark Along the Ways. Again, I'll start by saying I'm still enjoying the show very much. No major spoilers or plot reveals, but I will try to get my feelings out without putting too much bias and I don't I try not to look at things on you know online. So this might be more of a you know initial feelings type thing. I'm getting a real joy from the show, but as I get towards the end of the season, because there's only one episode left, which will be called The Eye of the World, I can see hardcore book fans pulling their hair out in a sense where there's so much that happens in the first book that they've blown through. I get that. I try to think of it like my novel that I um, wrote, that I published. Let's say I did have a whole series of books. I would be happy if the people who opted to take my property did it as well as this. And I think for people who don't know the series, this is extremely well done. And I think that's the balancing act I'm trying to hold. I am a real big fan of the novels. It holds a special place in my heart. There's so much I use that uh, I flavor my worlds with from this type of show or genre or novels. The fantasy world. I'm a dungeon master for 30 years over. Played the D&D. Game master. All sorts of genres. But I'm just trying to give you the idea of where I'm coming from with the show. That I'm loving it as a D&D um, player, GM. It's got so many of the elements of classic Dungeons and Dragons. With your certain character classes. It's got good twists on things. And it's done very well. So it's made for me in that sense. But I do have that place in my mind where I'm going, wow, there's so much they've mixed up. There's so much they've skipped over. But here we are talking about episode 7, The Dark Along the Ways. And they're trying to use these travel stones, let's say, portals, to get to the eye of the world quick. And they go in, and there's trouble. Like I said, not too many plots or spoilers, but... The ways have been corrupted. There's a little bit of um, pressure and stress uh, leading up. I did they think they did it very well, especially showing Nynaeve again. Um, really, uh, you know, really shining, for lack of a better word. And I'm really enjoying it. There's this a sense of they left Matt behind. That's not a spoiler from the last one. Uh, he chose not to go, and there's that kind of dilemma where you, some people might see it as bad writing, where it's you no, know, it's clearly he didn't want to go. It's not like they locked him out, but then they start putting a little twist where Moraine's like, uh, if he is the Dark One, if he is a Dragon Reborn, and he has been corrupted, you can't let him nowhere near the Dark One. And they were playing with this sort of. Was he left behind? Or, um, you know, maybe they could have held it up and convinced him to come. That sort of thing. So, Matt's out of the group. The group finds some danger in the ways. Loyal, again, I'm enjoying so much of this that it's uh, criminal. And they're able to go to a different gate, not as close as they hoped they would be. But this is a great exploration into land. As they go to Fal- Faldara. And you find out this history about land. I think it's touching. I think it's very well done. This uh, love that is bloomed between him and Nynaeve. I think it's done so well with Moraine. Men. You get to see men. Which is such a favorite of mine in a the book. There's so much going on that I'm really happy at the pace they're keeping me at. Even when it's mundane things and it's 
character development and what's getting at the heart of um, certain issues, why they flare up at each other and stuff. From my point of view and from, you know, in, in the novel, the book's point of view, these are young kids, uh, teenagers who have been whisked away from their village and they had, they've had these years of this um, build up between them and it's, I like the way they're doing it. I'm not bothered by some of the things that um, might seem to be slowing the show down. I'm liking the rhythm they're giving me. For me, it's the best of both worlds where I love certain aspects of Game of Thrones, but it never did it for me. Where, and I've read those novels, and I think the show is better than the novels, but I guess that can tell you something else also. Those books aren't a beloved part of me, and this show is starting to at least um, give me the satisfaction and the joy of experiencing this world in live action. The Wheel of Time is epic. It's huge. It's filled with a lot of stuff. Battle stuff, uh, character. And its scope is, I've said this in um, a lot of the podcasts I'm doing week to week now, these books are huge. They're 800, over a thousand pages long. They have such a expertise in writing and descriptions of things that elevate um, the quality of the work he produced, but can't be done on the show. I just don't see it possible. And I think, again, that's where I come with this crossroads where if you asked me, I knew nothing about the books and stuff, I would be totally recommending the show. I think for people who don't know about the fantasy series or something, this is a great way to get into a D&D world or a fantasy world. Good pacing, good acting, characters. Um, you can see them growing, the growth of them. There's a inner strength or talent as the actors that are there underlying their portrayal of young, confused, scared people. And one of the main characters in this episode uh, embraces that and expresses that he's he's scared, his fear. And is this also who is the Dragon Reborn? And Moraine using men to have someone who sees auras um, get an idea because she still doesn't know. She's got to bring them all to the eye of the world. And, you know, there's... Uh, only the Dragon Reborn should be there. I am so into the show. Week to week, having so much fun. I dare to say that anything's going to impact that. And that could be a bias from my love from the books. But again, I try to be honest about my love for the books are different from the show. This is a show I would enjoy no matter what. The fact that they're doing it based on a series of novels that I truly love. You just do it good. This is going to be their take on things. So this person saying that dialogue, it was given to this person. Narration and prophecy is going to be given to certain characters at certain points. Um, you'll fast forward certain love interests or um, give a backstory that's a little different. I'm fine with all this. And the pacing is good for me. It's working for me. It's keeping my brain going with certain things that are going on. I think they got a good blend of that. And it's the first season. We can give it a pass. Usually I give three episodes, and then I know if I'm going to at least bother, and that, that's a win right there. So the first three episodes of this show I think are great. I really enjoyed them. And I'm looking at coming to the end of the season now, excited still for the next one, um, um, cautious about the future, because I know the scope. I've read them all. So this show is gonna have to grow in scope really quickly and I'm so I'm really excited and happy about it. So I'm having such a ball with the show. And like I said, they get through the portal as I'm jumping all over the place and they get to the Faldara and it's a um refuge from a great nation that fell to the blight and they show the blight which is a corrupted nature or forest. And that Lan is the future king of Malkia. And 
again, you got so much to describe in the book, you're not going to be able to do it in the show, but I, the actors are good. I was, I was, I was drawn in, uh, you know, calling him Dai Shen or Dai Shen, or however it been pronounced it. And I'm really um, enjoying it. Again, there is a part of my brain that's going back and forth between you've got one more episode to go. The book is, the first book is, you know, so big and, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm so pleased at this point, but trying to hold a, you know, somewhat unbiased uh, look at it also. Again, what could I say about maybe some of the music being um, too low in the background or um, not present enough on certain peaks of things, but this is just little nitpicks I'm trying to come up with in the show. I think there's a... Um, decent enough concern from the people who love the books to see where it's going and what they've changed already or mixed and, you know, shuffled around. But I'm still really excited about it. Again, you get to see a character called Min and how important she is in a book in a certain sense and it doesn't show anything here it's i think they're doing it really smart and i'm really impressed in certain circumstances i don't even have a lot of negatives except for the music being just a little lacking in its crescendos and like when it builds where um maybe it's a good thing too is so at least it's not bothering me that it's annoying and not you know, it's not placed right. The sound effects, the special effects, everything is good. They're trying very hard, you can tell. So there could be an improvement there if you're looking at how their magic is working. And they did at least hint at the... Uh, the... the new breed of Aes Sedai women that they're finding... And making this um, correlation between the old ones needing to move their hands and do certain patterns and the new ones not needing that. And where these are the most powerful Aes Sedai you've seen in such a long time and Nynaeve is being the focal point of that in a sense. And this will change in, like I said, scope because we're talking about kingdoms and nations uh politics and stuff that get really shuffled around and upended and then you know uh, hints at invasions and where the show is gonna go is uh, obvious to me in a sense because i know the books and how much will they change i'm not sure but they've got a, a hard job ahead of them but as we're sitting here at episode 7, The Dark Along the Ways, one episode left, The Eye of the World, I am still happy. I am enjoyed every time I watch it. I feel a connection and immersed in the show. I recognize a couple of things here and there, but nothing stands out. Even when I do these, I still try to recognize... I'm, I'm smiling the whole episode. I'm getting to the end. Um... The only thing that comes to my mind when I turn the mic on is, oh, I, w I would like some powerful music crescendos and a little bit more epicness. But again, I I'm battling with um, the book and the stuff too. And I'm just having a ball here. I am so enjoying the show. Again, recommend it to everybody. Even the novels. I mean, if you're into the Tolkien novels and let's say... um his style and brand it's touted in a lot of uh robert jordan's work that he was the successor to tolkien so if that's any um indication that you might be interested in the wheel of time world like i said they are big books they are in depth and description and he has a certain style that's um a little more sophisticated, maybe, in a certain sense, where uh, Tolkien liked to embrace the childlikeness of the hobbits, and, you know, when you watch the old things where they're singing and stuff, 
this seems to be the continuation where that has been pulled out of people and the Dark One's touch on the world, let's say Sauron, has gotten stronger again. And Anyway, I'm starting to ramble on here. There's a definite element I'm cautious about, but I'm so enjoying myself. I totally recommend the show. And again, like I said, the books are something you want to get into. I recommend those also. I mean, they could be long reads, but well worth it when you see the scope of things. I mean... Like again, again, I'm still connecting that to what could happen in the show. It feels small, and when it shows its grandness, you see peaks at what could be coming. And I'm happy what they're doing, but in order to do that, the show's got to up its game again. Uh, like I said, the first season's coming out strong for me. I'm loving it, but you look at it from someone who's coming off, uh, well, Game of Thrones, let's say, last season's. Not in story, because it sucked and it, in my opinion, ruined so many good characters, but the quality of that show is undeniable. That quality is not here yet. You can still feel um, the presence of a small cast and extras and little uh, hints that the show is trying to find its footing and it's growing. All understood in a first season I was talking to a friend about uh, The Witcher's second season coming out and me wanting to get on that right away and how hard the first one is looking back and that's another beloved type you know property on that the way they did the timeline and things it was as much as I love certain parts of the episodes and their waste of special effects because in that case The Witcher made mistakes this show hasn't done that yet I think they're a little smarter in that but i'm happy to know he's enjoying the second season and you know i I love the uh property and also what i've seen so far because i did enjoy the witcher the first season but this i am really loving i'm really excited for it i I wait for it every week in that sense Uh, i love to want to talk about it and uh you know compare things about what's going on in the books and I'm really happy. And this is a direct opposition to how I was feeling watching the Shannara series. And I've mentioned this constantly because if I had to choose one, I might say R.A. Salva, I mean, no, no. Uh, Terry Brooks' Shannara series, all those books are my favorites. Now, what they did to that show, what they did to the property, I'm not happy with. And watching it, I saw elements that I like, you know, actors I like and things, and the special effect looks good, but the show never found its footing, it felt cheap, it didn't look, um, you know, didn't look quality-wise, up to par, especially when certain elements of the book were shown to be so lackluster that it was underwhelming. This is trying very hard. I think it's written very well, with little exceptions here and there, but I think those little exceptions are on purpose for showing, you know, that young people growing up and getting thrust into this world. I think everybody should be watching it, and I guess I'll end here. The Wheel of Time, Episode 7, The Dark Along the Waves. Watch the show, let me know what you think. Wish you all the best. Take care.